Today we're going to be talking about the best legendary investment order for free to play players. What's going on guys? Cheers. I can't believe it's been since September that I've made a video covering the best investment order here in Rise of Kingdoms, but a ton of commanders have been released since then. The game has changed a ton and we have to talk about it. Now, instead of scrolling through here and jumping around to all the different commanders, what I'm going to do is do something a little bit more organized. Okay. We've got ourselves a tier maker here and this isn't in tier order. This is just your five pairs. We've got some honorable mentions, your Canyon team, and then the commanders that as a free to play or low spender you should just avoid in general so if you're a brand new player to rise of kingdoms this video is going to be extremely important for you but before we begin about 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel go ahead and click that sub button down below it really helps the channel a ton and if you don't like the content you can always unsub later so this video is going to be divided into essentially two parts okay it's going to be your first year in rise of kingdoms and what you should sort of have by the end of that first year and then we're going to talk about your second year in rise of kingdoms and that's the point where you have a couple of different choices but i'm going to really narrow it down for you guys so you know exactly what to do so if you're a brand new player and you're in a brand new kingdom the first legendary investment that you should make is going to be summoning Richard the first from the wheel of fortune he's gonna be on the first wheel of fortune that shows up now if you're actually a low spender and you have some gems to spend maybe you can spin his wheel a little bit more than just summoning him because eventually we're gonna return to Richard and I'm gonna explain why in just a little bit so make sure you stay tuned but for now just summon him be patient leave him at level one no stars nothing just leave him there now your second legendary investment investment is going to be Yi Song Ye. Now, if you've seen any other video talking about your legendary commanders and which order to invest in them, this is the number one commander that everybody says you should expertise first. And that has not changed. Yi Song is incredibly valuable. You can use him in pretty much every event kvk archivo cyrus you can use him to defend your city he's good for pretty much everything he has an incredible circular aoe when he's expertise he does a ton of skill damage he's just overall an incredibly good legendary commander now after esong's wheel has come and gone you're gonna see genghis khan he's gonna show up on the wheel afterwards and honestly khan is not a commander that i really recommend free to play or low spenders to invest in so we're gonna move him into the avoid category after khan's wheel passes you're gonna get alexander and alexander is absolutely a commander that you want to summon when he comes around and spin as many times as you possibly can because eventually you're going to expertise alexander as well however before you expertise alexander i'm gonna make the controversial claim that you should after expertising isong you should go back and get your richard to 5511 now i've already made a video a few weeks ago talking about whether or not richard is still good in 2021 and of course as a free to play player getting him to 5511 is a relatively low investment to get a commander that is incredibly good for for a lot of different things especially chaining barbarians now chiskel already made a really great video talking about barb chaining and how versatile it is how many rewards you can get especially in the form of materials for your equipment and richard is exceptional at that specifically for two reasons one he's incredibly tanky right so he can bring your isong ye along with him but two he's an infantry commander that heals himself and not only is he very tanky but three of the epic equipments actually have damage to barbarians here in quinn's soul seth's brutality and frost treads all of these are going to deal extra damage to barbarians and the gatekeeper shield does give you extra experience so needless to say richard is going to be a barb chaining barb killing machine you're going to be able to get a ton of value out of your action points with a richard isong a combination but just in general for all pvp content having your richard be the primary commander to your isong gives a little bit of tankiness to isong and hopefully he will last a little bit longer in the open field so now that you've got esong expertise 5511 richard so you can just crush that pve content and get tons of value out of it you're going to then go back and expertise your alexander and the reason that alexander is the second expertise in your roster is because alexander is just incredible in all open field uses he has a little bit of support with his small shields he also has a shield for himself that's relatively tanky he also has a ton of stats for your infantry which is super incredible he's got march speed he has single target damage factor he's just an incredible legendary commander overall and expertising him is going to give you a ton of value not only that but he pairs super well with the commanders that you've already invested in having an alex richard add some tankiness to your alexander making him last a little bit longer in the open field or my favorite combination is alex esong which is super heavy on the damage per second but he's a little bit more fragile so he's probably going to get targeted but either way alex esong is incredibly good for pve pvp using him in things like Ian's Ballad or Soroli Crisis, 
everything like that this is just an incredibly good combination now you might be saying omniarch we've talked about two expertise in a 5511 how long is that going to take well that is probably going to take if you're a super active player and you're playing an arc of osiris you're doing Kurok ceremony you're doing all the events that you possibly can you're active every day doing this will probably take you around a year right give or take a little bit and you may be super discouraged because you see all of these other commanders that we haven't even talked about yet so this is where we're going to clear that up now while you're working on these three you're actually going to be getting a ton of other commanders from your gold keys just by playing the game so this is the part where we're going to go through and we're going to sort through all of these commanders and pick out the ones that you should be using from the gold keys okay so we've got a lot to talk about here okay the honorable mentions include charles martel which is the most powerful gold key legendary commander in the game after about one year you should hopefully have him around a 5511 I know that that may be a little bit more difficult because they've added Ragnar so it really depends on the RNG of the gold keys of course but at the one year mark hopefully you'll have close to a or already exceeded a 5511 Charles Martel again you want to make sure that you're getting all the gold keys that you possibly can for free doing all the events you also will probably have an expertise virtually every single epic commander in the game but the ones that are actually usable here are Bjorn Joan of Arc and Sun Tzu now for good measure I've thrown in Cao Cao El Cid Mulan and also Minamoto and the reason for this is because as a free-to-play player Cao Cao is still probably one of the better cavalry commanders that you're going to get for free until you start investing into some of the ones that you get later down the line same thing with El Cid Mulan is nice she does provide a nice buff but you'll probably only really use her at 5511 and perhaps like Ark of Osiris or something like that and of course if you're free to play you'll never have Minamoto but if you're watching this and you're a low spender then getting him to 5511 would be a really excellent pair especially in the early game with your Cao Cao so that again that's a pair that's not for free to play but some of you that may apply now when it comes to your Canyon team this is isn't going to be your canyon team okay you want to include the three commanders that we've already started investing in as well as some of these honorable mentions here and then the canyon team are these are just commanders that you could use in your canyon team if you wanted to right cpo is good ulji is good if you have you know an archer march then of course kiara and kusunoki would be nice mehmed is good at 5511 caesar is good at 5511 and same thing with freddy and then in the avoid category are just all the epic commanders that you probably won't really ever use right now of course things like belisarius for example or herman you know maybe you'll use these occasionally of course you know we do have the gatherers here matilda you're going to use them for some things but when we're talking about pve uh events or pvp content like kvk and arc you're probably never going to use these commanders at the bottom here so with that being said we can actually fill in some of the other pairs here with these honorable mentions until we get commanders that are even better so again at the one year mark you'll probably have close to or already accomplished a 5511 charles martel i do not recommend using Using universals on Charles Martel you're gonna get him for free from the gold keys yes it will take a long time but 5511 is a very solid starting point especially because his third skill is just garrison related and his fourth skill is really nice but it is just counter-attack damage so hopefully moving forward when you skill him up it all goes to that fourth skill but regardless you'll have him and you'll definitely have an expertise to Sun Tzu by that one year mark if you're doing things right now you also have Joan who's an incredibly good support and buff commander you can drop your Joan with your Richard to add some tankiness and hopefully it'll sort of be left alone in the open fields and finally uh, if you did go with uh you know getting Minamoto you can use Minamoto primary with Cao Cao secondary and now you have effectively three decent infantry marches and a standalone cavalry march for the sake of this video we're going to remove the Cao Cao Minamoto I just wanted to give you guys that sort of idea and I also want to throw in that you could put Bjorn in really any of these combinations here instead of the other epics because Bjorn is a really good infantry epic commander who's just doing a little bit of debuffing to the enemy so of course if you want to go ahead and do that you could add him to martel for example he'll provide some nice stats as well you could even interchange these and just not use the epics at all and that's the beauty of what we have here in fact i'd probably do something like this because then you have nice damage on both of these pairs but regardless the best part about this first year in rise of kingdoms is that everything is super interchangeable and that's really what you want when it comes to investments in legendary commanders because then you're a bit more versatile and you have 
a bit more tools in your toolkit. Finally, at the one year mark, you're also going to have Ethelflaed, who will probably be expertise at this point if you're doing expedition, right? And Ethelflaed is honestly incredible, right? You probably don't want to use her as a primary commander because she's really going to be targeted in the open field. But of course, you could put her behind a tank and you would just use her just like that to do AoE debuffing, AoE damage. She's really great for that. And that pretty much concludes your first year in Rise of Kingdoms, right? And I know that doesn't seem like a crazy amount, but it's a really good starting point and a really good springboard to bounce off of and go into different directions. But before we move forward, I do want to move some of these commanders into the avoid section. So that way, you know, moving forward, if you encounter them, that you pretty much can just forget them. So let's go in here and we're going to remove Charlemagne. If you haven't seen my video talking about the six worst legendaries in the game, then you, you should go ahead and check that out. It's important to know. But of course, Charlemagne does go into the avoid column. Of course, so do the gatherers of you're going to use the gatherers, uh, you know, just by default. But in terms of using universal commander sculptures on them, you're absolutely going to avoid doing that. Uh, Dao Chan, I don't know how she avoided the first Exodus round there. Uh, Edward, you know, Edward may see some resurgence in later in HA, depending on, you know, the future of the Archer commanders. But right now, as a free to play player, you know, he's really used for rallies. You're not going to really use him. So we're going to go ahead and move him. We're going to move Mar Barca in here. Barca costs money and he's really not good at all. Ishida, same thing with the gatherers. Lubu is garbage. Same thing with Moctezuma. You're not going to invest in these commanders as free to play. Trust me, you can move the other gatherers in here as well. We also have a uh, Wuzetian, which is a good commander, but is strictly garrison and any strictly garrison commanders uh, belong in the avoid category. If you're a free to play or low spender. And the reason for that is because if you're going to be the garrison captain, uh, you really want to have max HA tech. You want to have T5 units. You want to have legendary gear because you're responsible for surviving all of the rallies that are going to be coming your way. So if you're free to play, I would say generally avoid garrison exclusive commanders. So that also includes uh, Theodora. That also includes YSS and Zenobia as well. Now there's a few other ga uh, garrison commanders in here, but they do other things. And so we're not going to touch them for now. Oh, and Yad Yadvika, did I say that right? Uh, she's also pretty much just a garrison commander. So we can avoid avoid her for now as well. So we've still got quite a few commanders here that we can pick from. And in my old video, this is the point of the video where I recommended a 5511 Constantine. However, the problem with a Constantine investment these days is that Trajan exists. Now, one of the primary reasons that I recommended a 5511 Constantine is because he had the support tree and when using him in Sunset Canyon, he is an absolute monster. And the good news is that Trajan also has the same support tree, but his skills are just slightly better. Additionally, moving forward, you can always come back and expertise Trajan later. Whereas Constantine, you're just, you're really not going to do that, right? So you can stop at 5511 and have a really solid support march and really great in Sunset Canyon or you can expertise him or come back later and expertise him. But in general, I would say Trajan is slightly better than Constantine for a free to play player as a supportive March for both open field fighting and for your Canyon team. And guys don't sleep on sunset Canyon as a free to play player. It's going to give you a ton of rewards and the higher you can push in sunset Canyon, the more opportunities you have for silver keys, gold keys, all that stuff. I do want to issue a warning. If you're a free to play player and you're investing in Trajan, you will be a target in the open field, especially in KVK because Trajan can become very tanky as an expertise commander. And so players know that not only is he a problem because he's very supportive, but he needs to be swarmed down. So be prepared in the open fields. If you're a free to play player, you're probably going to get swarmed down with your Trajan. Okay. So be very careful with how you use him because the odds are your heroic Anthem tech is not going to be as good as some of those pay to win whales. And honestly, that's sort of a big deal, right? And that's why I almost didn't recommend Trajan in this video, because again, getting swarmed down as a free to play player is really devastating. It's very debilitating, but it's just, it's hard to say that you should avoid Trajan, right? Because he just really is so supportive and so good for Sunset Canyon. And he does a lot. Not only that, he's incredibly good as a primary for your Ethelfled, who otherwise would also be swarmed down very, very quickly. So you get a little bit of tankiness, you know, it, he's, if he's not expertise, it's not much, but you get a little bit of tankiness for your Ethelfled there. And she's also very, very much a debuffing commander. This is very much a buffing commander. So there's a lot going on here, which I love, but if you don't want to invest in Trajan and you aren't interested in him, stay tuned because we're going to talk about a separate path that you could go if you're not interested in Trajan. Okay. But let's say you are, let's say you want to go for the five, five, one, one Trajan with the opportunity to maybe expertise him later. Where does that trajectory eventually lead you? Well, 
I would argue that Guan Yu should be an incredibly good commander that you focus on. Okay. Now, whether or not you do Guan Yu first or Trajan first is going to be up to you. Of course, Guan Yu will show up sooner. So at least summoning him will be much easier. And Guan Yu is really interesting because if we take a look at Guan Yu here in the game, you're going to see that Guan Yu is a commander that you really only need to do a five, one, five, five to get 90% of his value. And really when it comes to free to play players, the heads that you save or the sculptures that you save, not getting this skill to five is insane, right? You could invest in whole other commanders, right? Like those last four skill points are huge investments. So you absolutely want to try your best to get a five, one, five, five Guan Yu. And in the past, you only had one shot at this. If you didn't get it, you didn't get it. And you were stuck either forced to invest all the way into an expertise Guan Yu or you had to just leave him however he landed and move on to something else and cut your losses. The great news is that Lilith did implement a skill reset item in Rise of Kingdoms that you can get pretty consistently in this game. You can see I have two. If you were playing the game when they introduced the skill lock feature, you got three for free. I've already used one of them and you get them for free by playing the Champions of Olympia game mode and the Hall of Flame will give you two for free by meeting these specific requirements. So my recommendation for Guan Yu is to get enough skill points to make him a 5155. Five. Of course, you max this first skill first, then you take him to four stars and unlock all of his skills and you start to invest legendary commander sculptures into him and hope that you get a 5155. Again, that means you need enough sculptures to do 12 skill ups. If your luck is terrible and all of your points go into this second one, then you can just use a skill reset and try again. I would continue to do this over and over and over again until you get as close as you can to a 5155 Guan Yu because Guan Yu is an exceptionally good legendary commander in this game. And honestly, for a free to play player, having him with such few heads invested, I think is probably more beneficial than the Trajan at 5511. So personally, my recommendation is to invest in Guan Yu before Trajan if you decide to go this route. My personal preference is to put Joan of Arc on the bench, YSG as secondary to your Richard, then you put Guan as your primary to your Alex, and now you have an incredible lineup of powerful legendary infantry commanders all of which are a little bit tanky and all of which have nice AOE damage. After you finish Guan Yu, if you decide to do the 5511 Trajan, you throw in that Ethelflaed on the back end there. And ideally you should have this before the end of your second year, honestly. With that being said, I'm going to move Constantine into the honorable mentions. If you decide to go this route, you're very, very infantry focused already. And I would say clearly the next investment that you should make would be either a infantry legendary that has yet to come out yet, which, you know, as this game gets older, there's just more and more commanders. And so by the time you watch this, or the, by the time you get to this point, uh, you're, you're, you know, this video might be outdated. Uh, but at the time of recording this Harold is the obvious next choice in my opinion, because you're not going to have an expertise Guan Yu. So therefore having a Leonidas is not as useful because that shield that you're going to get, isn't going to proc the skill damage buff from his expertise. So Harold is an, a next commander. And with Harold, you do have to expertise him. So consider this your sort of capstone investment for your infantry account. It's going to take quite a while to expertise uh, Harold and everything that you see from Harold up is going to take, you know, to do all of this, it's probably going to take uh, at least two years, if not more. But once you do that, you can actually sort of drop your Sun Tzu and put your uh, Harold behind your Martel. Hopefully your Martel has a five, five, one, five by this point, fingers crossed. And you'll have just incredibly good legendary commanders at your disposal as a free to play player. And again, they're all interchangeable you could totally move these around however you see fit you could go back and have one fully tanky march and you know two really super damaging marches it's up to you what you want to do you could also do a sort of a, a herald um, Trajan March here, which would be super good as well. Honestly, with that being said, if you don't want to go the route of Trajan, right? You think Trajan is too risky. You don't want to be swarmed down in KVK. There's probably going to be some pretty hefty hospital bills involved with having a Trajan as a free to play player. So if you don't want to go with Trajan, let's go ahead and move Trajan and the other infantry commanders into the honorable mentions. Okay. Let's say you've, uh, you've, you've finished the, the commanders that we've already talked about here at the beginning of the video. Let's see you go ahead and do this. And this is, remember, this is where you were after your first year in Rise of Kingdoms. If you like the way that this looks also with, you know, Sun Tzu as well, and you're okay, you're done with infantry. You want to move on to something else. I highly recommend moving into the realm of cavalry with your Saladin at five, 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 one, and 
a William at 5551. Now, both of these commanders at 5551 get about 90% of their value, just like a 5155 Guan Yu. And the benefit of this commander pairing is that Saladin is still incredibly good, even late game in Rise of Kingdoms. He's very tanky for a cavalry march. He also paired with William is a very supportive march as well. William is incredibly good, again, for that extra rage that he's giving all of your allies. He has a nice AOE there. He's got some stats for your, for your cavalry. There's a lot to love about this pair. And and getting them both to 5551 is going to take only a little bit more sculptures than a full expertise of a commander like Harold, which you basically have to expertise. So in this way, you have a really good use of all those cavalry units that you've been training over time. And this also is a great springboard for your final capstone investment, which would be a Zhang Yu. Now there's been a lot of talk about Zhang Yu. Zhang Yu is performing really, really well here in Rise of Kingdoms as a rally leader, but also in the open field. So you might be thinking, who do you pair with Zhang Yu if you go ahead and, and focus in that route? Well, the great news is that you actually would pair your William with Zhang Yu and you would put your Ethelfled with your Saladin. And all of a sudden you have a tanky debuffing march and you have a really solid AOE damage march with your Zhang Yu William. And again, William's not even expertise. So you get a lot of value out of two commanders, one of which isn't even fully maxed. So this would be sort of your two year goal here if you wanted to pivot towards cavalry afterwards. And if you decide to do that, uh, then I would recommend to sort of just avoid uh, Attila. Honestly, if you go this route, you really don't need Attila. There's just no commanders here that you would pair him with. Uh, of course, you know, if you decide to get Takeda, um, you could always do a Saladin Takeda and sort of move these commanders back. And now you've got a really, you know, solid pairing here as well. Um, overall, I think, you know, you're probably going to just, you, you don't really need Takeda. It's just like, if you've, if you finished everything else I've said, and you want to know what the next, uh, uh, commander I would suggest is, you know, maybe you could do Takeda or something like that, but you don't really need him. And then again, Chandragupta would just be a super heavy investment, which would be great for Zhang Yu. But again, we're, we're already talking uh, about a two year plan here, right? So by the time, uh, by the time you get to this point with your account, um, there's probably going to be other legendary cavalry commanders in the game that might outclass some of the ones down here. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, Omniarch, you didn't talk anything about, uh, the, the archer commanders in the game, right? There's a ton of archer commanders down here, all of which are, are pretty much, yeah, pretty much all of which are incredibly good, right? And that's absolutely true. But remember, if we come back to where we were after our first year, what would you do if at the next point you invested in expertising Ramses, right? Because you really would want to expertise a commander like Ramses. Well, naturally you would move your Esong over here. And then who would you pair with your Alexander, right? You could do something like this, uh, and have a more tanky infantry march, but then what are you going to do with Joan? You're not really going to, I mean, are you going to put Joan here and Sun Tzu there and, and, and that's it, right? I mean, you could totally do that, but at that point, this march is going to be completely melted down. Uh, and so you've sort of, you know, you've gained an incredibly powerful legendary in the form of Ramses and you've sort of diversified towards archers, uh, but you also sort of broke up the synergy that you all, that you had already. And this <clears throat> by no means am I saying that this is a bad plan, but I think that if you pivot from your original investments here, uh, at this point, if you pivot towards archers, you're going to start to be looking at a, a bit more of an expensive plan, right? It's just, it's just a bit more expensive, uh, to go in my opinion, um, to go from the first year starting, uh, to pivot to archers. It, that's just my opinion. Okay. And they may release, you know, archer commanders in the future that are incredible at five, five, one, one or five, 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 one. And at that point, you know, I'll eat my words. Um, and again, by no means am I saying that these archer commanders are bad because some of these are literal like meta tier rallying combos. And a lot of them, Artemisia, uh, Ramsey's incredibly good in the open field. But again, pivoting from that initial first year investment, which I think, you know, is really rock solid. Uh, it just, it costs a lot more to do that. So if you decide to go towards archer, Archers just know uh, that that most of these commanders in the archer category have to be expertise, right? And you know, Tamaris is an exception, and sort of Artemisia as well. A five-five-one-one Artemisia is really solid, to be honest. But by going more towards infantry or more towards cavalry, you just have a couple of better options. Guys, with that being said, this video was way longer than I thought it would be. So if you got anything useful out of this video, if you found it informative or entertaining or anything like that, make sure to drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm to be shown to other eyes 
Legends of Kingdoms players. Of course, if you're new around here and you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest legendary commanders, usually we do some leak videos. If we get those leaks in hand before they drop, you will be the first to know if you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. A free way to support the channel is to download Rise of Kingdoms with the link in the description below. It's using a program called Blue Stacks for your PC. It's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. You can play it on a big screen. And honestly, I've been using Blue Stacks for years way before Rise of Kingdoms. And if it turns out that you don't like Blue Stacks, you could always uninstall it later. It's no big deal. And again, it does help the channel a ton. All my social media links are in the description below. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord. All that stuff is always down below. Finally, comment down below if you agree with this investment order, either of the paths, whether you go the Trajan infantry route or you go the Saladin cavalry route. I would love to know your opinions down below. Did I miss anything? Do you think that I'm wrong? Do you think this is good advice? I would love to hear from you down there. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.